Hi, so it's a little update on the cell. We're back on the bench with one centimetre square cells. That's what's under here, and of course it's running the motor. It's running the motor at about 22, 23 milliamps at the moment, dropping down to about uh, 173 millivolts. Now the reason we're doing this, and there it stopped. The reason we're doing this is because I bothered to get some of these. These are dual thieves. So I've stuck a dual thief in here just to see how it'll run. And I've been running it off and on a few times. Um, it tends to last on this one square centimetre about six minutes and the output's fairly steady until it begins to die. It sort of dies round about, uh, well you saw, um, and it outputs round about 30 milliamps for the, most of the duration of that. But it was pretty exciting so I thought I'd just quickly share with you the, the dual thief in with it being able to run that motor. So let's charge it up again and in a minute we'll discharge it again. Oh hell, that's enough. <laughs> Just reset me, uh, me watch. There we go. So the dual thief is able to help pull this uh, device down. Now what we're measuring here incidentally is the power that's going across the load, not the power that's been drawn through the circuit. We don't actually know what that is. We know what power is being delivered to this motor. And that's a really important point, I think, because I think what matters is the power that you're actually getting at the point at which you use it. The power in the battery, we don't know, we're guesstimating it. We know we've got a ton of losses all going on in this jumble of wires that connects everything together. But the important point is, what are we getting out here? What work can actually be done? So the um, ammeter is actually measuring the draw across that load. The voltmeter is measuring the volts across the cell. So we can see the cell drop and see when it's sort of, you know, getting towards the end of its life. But what we really want to know is how long, how much power is going to be delivered to what we want to do with it. So that's what we're measuring here. We're not measuring the battery uh, and what the battery actually has. We're measuring what the battery can supply to the load. And if you think that's a really significant point and a really important point when looking at these kind of devices, now, I can tell you that's been running 1 minute 16 seconds for the few seconds that I gave it a charge. Because I was pretty fed up with it, really. So, <laughs> no attention span. That's the problem with the kids today. They can't concentrate. 20 seconds, plenty of time to charge a battery, get it working. <laughs> so, we're now at 1 minute 32, uh, 148 millivolts, and still 20 milliamps. The power is very low. But the point is, that battery, there you go, 142 seconds, that battery can deliver to the load that amount of power. We put the dual thief in to try and draw out more power from the device. And it seems to work. It works really quite nicely, actually. On full charge, this ran this device for six minutes at a fairly level load of about 31, 33 milliamp hours. But I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, and that's the dual uh, thief we used. And that one is supposed to drop down to the voltage it dropped down. This is a low voltage dual thief, which we'll give it a go. That's supposed to drop down to 0 0.03 millivolts, apparently. Um, if you're worried about how big this would be when we build the actual device, here's a SMD dual thief that I just love to hate, because that's a really tiny little thing, and we could glue that to the side of the battery. Um, also, the other thing I wanted to talk about, actually, was some of my thoughts on, on what to do with this. So, here's the thing. This is um, Steve's e-cigarette. Now, they're tremendously popular things. Uh, whatever you think about smoking, these are very popular. They're one of the biggest growing markets. And, of course, what they've got in them is a lithium. And, of course, the problem with them is um, you have to leave them on overnight to charge, and they last as long as the lithium chargers. Now, remember... This device can be tap charged, so we can charge this device almost instantly. And my thoughts go along, along the lines of a um, battery about that size, coupled with a um, very small dual thief, bundle of resistive wire so we get the heat, and package the whole thing into something like that. And, that, and that's where I'm kind of thinking of when we're looking at some kind of product that we might maybe, for instance, kickstart. The point being, of course, however long this lasts, it doesn't really matter because the charge time is going to be a matter of going click, click, and you're going to be charged and you're going to get quite a long run time. 
So you're not going to be waiting. It changes the sort of concept of these things a little bit. So I'm beginning to think about a product maybe along those lines that we could perhaps kickstart. Anyway, those are my thoughts on how to get that power out of there despite the voltage being so low. And I thought you'd be interested and I thought I'd share it with you. So thank you very much for watching.